Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm thrilled to be here with you. I'm just going to put this down. Every good singer knows you need water, but if I put it on that piano, bad news. I'll probably kick that over before we're finished. Um, so I'm thrilled to be here today working uh, with all of you for about the next 15 minutes or so. And it's good to see my counters up and running, so I, I know exactly when I have to finish as well. Um, so, I've had a bit of a peculiar uh, upbringing, I, I suppose. I, I was nine years old, and um, I got sent to an audition at Westminster Abbey to see if I could sing. And they told me I couldn't, which was a good start to my singing career. Um, but they did say I was okay at reading music, and I played the piano a bit, so they'd teach me how to sing. Um, and I got into this choir school, which is quite a unique experience. You end up uh, in a school with just 30 kids, and you live there the whole time. You're singing for about three hours, four hours every day. And you get to do some very interesting things. I think by the age of 11, I'd, uh, I'd sung for the Queen. And uh, I remember having a conversation only in as much as the Duke of Edinburgh asked me what my favorite football team was. I said, Arsenal. He said, wrong one. Uh, so that, that's, you know, they haven't spoken to me since, which is a shame. Uh, then I think I got to go to Russia um, in about 1993. We were the first uh, British choir to visit there since the 1950s, which was quite an amazing thing. Singing in the Kremlin was something I will never forget. And um, if, have any of you seen Braveheart? You, yeah, a few of you. Um, there's a moment quite near the end, if you, if you haven't seen it, sorry for the spoiler, where uh, it doesn't go so well for Mel. And as, as the axe drops and it all goes terribly wrong, um, you, you'll hear some angelic voices just drifting into the background, and that was me. So uh, <laughs> I did get to do some very curious and wonderful things. We met Mel Gibson, and he asked me um, whether O.J. Simpson was innocent or guilty. I was 11. I didn't know. Um, <laughs> but there we go. Um, Jump forward about 20 odd years, and I'm standing in front of you now. I, I think you've just heard my little bio. I run a charity. I, I get to spend my life singing, which is a wonderful thing. Um, I've been touring around all over the world and working in schools all over, um, and working really with a huge variety of ages and abilities for a number of years. And as we've been doing this, I've been very fortunate to meet an incredible, an incredible amount of amazing people. But at the same time, I've also encountered a lot of problems and challenges um, in the education system and the way that music is taught. And that's really what I want to speak to you about today. So I've made my slide work. This is a good start. I'm a musician. I'm rubbish with slides. Um, but we're talking about how can we use music to help us learn. And that really is um, the driving force behind the Voces 8 method, which is something we created over the last couple of years. Um, now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later, but what I really want to do is get you guys involved. I, I was um, in Copenhagen this morning listening, slightly terrified that the plane was not going to take off and I was not going to get here, uh, but I made it 25 minutes ago, so all is fine. Um, but as I was listening, you had a session with a, a great singer earlier, Maya, I think. Is, I don't know if she's still here. There she is. Um, and I, I, I turned it right at the, at the right time because she gave you some great tips on singing. Um, so we're going to just, I think she did a yawn with you, is that right? She did a big yawn. Can you, can you just do a big yawn for me again, just to wake yourselves up? It's been a long day. Did you actually do one? Can I really stretch out? Can I get you actually active here? Can you take a big stretch for me and just give yourself a big yawn? Oh, that's good. Perfect. I think I just needed that off to the plane, really. So what we're going to do is very, very simple. I'm going to set up a few little uh, things, and you're going to copy me. OK, that's all you have to do. So it's very, very easy. Whatever I do, you copy me. And there are four instructions. I'm going to be testing you on this later, by the way. So make sure you try and remember them. They are stop, louder, quieter, and keep on going. OK, are we, are we think we're OK with those? Not too tricky. What does that mean? What does that mean? No, sorry. What does that mean? OK, and what does that mean? Very good. And what does that mean? Awesome. You guys are brilliant. So that's very simple. I hope you can all see me even at the back. I am quite short, but we'll do, my, we'll do our best. Uh, so everybody, copy me. good at this. And up. And there. And like that. And like that. And that. And like that. 
Very good. <gasps> Say for me one. And with your hands as well. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. See, it's getting really complex now, isn't it? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Eight. Eight. Three. Three. <laughs> very, very good. Rub your hands together for me. And now say for me, one, two, three, four. 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 And keep that going. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and stop. Very good. You're very good at stopping. I'm not sure about the bit in the middle, but the stopping was excellent. Um, say for me, dumb. Paul is dumb. Tea. A nice cup of tea. Quiche. Quiche. <laughs> you think I'm weird, don't you? <laughs> it's okay, I am a bit. And then say for me, tea. tea. So now we're left with dumb, tea, quiche, tea. Can you say that with me? And dumb, tea, quiche, tea. Very nice. Now we're going to take all the vowels out of that. So instead of dumb, we're left with... Yep, yeah, very good. So the five of you who got going there, excellent. Say for me, dum. Perfect. Say for me, instead of T, we're left with? Very good. T -t -t -t. Instead of quiche, we're left with? Perfect. <laughs> and instead of T, we're left with? T. So now, dumb T, quiche T becomes? And stop. Very good. Can you see what we're doing here? You're smart. This is a TED talk. You must know what we're doing. We're creating a drum kit. Yes. So. Now we're going to stick the action that we learnt with the sound that we made. So we're going to do it nice and slowly. I want you to join in after the first time. It goes like this. And join in. One more time. And stop. Very, very good. That's excellent. That's our first rhythm. I want you to remember that for about two minutes. Can you, do you think you can do that? N no. Excellent. That's good. Um, one more rhythm to learn. We're going to clap on different numbers, OK? Uh, so watch me the first time, then tell me which numbers I clap on. It goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which numbers did I clap on? Oh, you're getting better at this. Excellent. So we're going to clap on one, four, seven, and eight. I'll do it the first time. Join in the second time. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, and stop. Very good. This is like a very quick tour through the Voce's Eight method because we don't have very long. But here's where it gets a bit interesting, hopefully. This side of the room, up to here, you guys are going to be team number one. Over here, you guys are team number two. Team number one, did I hear someone go, yes? <laughs> that's what we like. Team number two, come on. Do you want to do a yes as well? Oh, woo! Yeah, that's also loud. Very good. So, team number one, you guys are going to go, dum, dum. Team number two, you guys are going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to start these guys off. And the important thing here is that we all just have our ears open and awake because we've got to make sure it sticks together like glue. Okay? So we're going to start over here. I'm going to get you going, and then I just want you to keep going. Is that okay, team one? Yes, you're going a bit crazy. It's the end of the day, isn't it? I'm sure you're wondering what on earth has happened, but you're, you're stuck here now for the next 10 minutes. So here we go. 
With me, after four, team one. One, two, three, four. Dum 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 Keep that going. And a bit louder. There we go. Dum Team two, after four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Everybody, bring the volume up. Oh, that's good. Nice. And down again. One, two, three, four, and stop. Very, very good. I'd love to keep going with this all day. You probably wouldn't, but you know, that's kind of, this is what I do. Um, However, we don't really have time. What I really want to do is just begin to explore what it is that we've done there, which is where I go and get my clicker. This is the exciting moment, see if it works. If you just think about what it is we've just done. Now, I'm a professional singer. Would you call what we did singing? Probably not. But actually, what we've done is begun to create music. And we've done it in a way that actually begins to make the brain function differently and stimulate us in certain ways. I'm a really good artist, aren't I? That's <laughs> quite something, I think you'll agree. But what it tells us, in case you need to understand, is that um, this is the, the method that we've created is actually based on a piece of research that was published by the Institute of Education in 2009 called The Power of Music. And what it does is it looks at the specific types of music that are shown to have a transfer into academic learning. Okay, that's, that's the real nub of this. This is what we're trying to achieve. Music that has a positive impact on learning. This particular study um, included work on a data of 45,000 students in America who'd taken part in a series of uh, three months of workshops. At the end, their results had gone that way. But interestingly, in certain subjects and the type of music they had done had, a had an impact on the type of improvement that we saw. So what we're seeing another beautiful slide, I think you'll agree, is how sweet music can lead to hard sums. Actually, the rhythm exercises that we've just been doing there, you'll be able to see instantly that there was a lot of playing with numbers and getting our brain thinking in that kind of capacity. And what the research is showing is that if you're working around rhythm, you'll see improvement in numeracy. If you're working on things involving syllables or anything pitched, you can begin to think about linguistics. So actually, we're trying to tie in a specific type of music with a specific area of academic learning. It's not just, I'm going to listen to some music and that's going to make me cleverer. Many of you probably know the, the Mozart effect that was talked about. Uh, if you listen to Mozart, you'll be really clever. I'd love that to be true, but unfortunately, I think it might require a little bit more hard work. Um, so what we're thinking about, ultimately, with these exercises is getting the left and the right side of the brain working together. Okay? And that, ultimately, is the nub of the Voges 8 method. Uh, I, I should probably give you, a, at this point, a quick uh, intro into who Voches 8 is and what we do. Um, so, hopefully, this is a little intro into us. That's a kind of brief intro into who we are and what we get to do. This, uh, I thought a picture of my bottom was probably the best thing to show you. Uh, this was a kind of fun gig that we did in Turin a couple of years ago. Um, so there's eight of us in the group, and we get to sing all sorts of music, um, classical, jazz, pop. And all the time, we're basically creating layers with our voices. And really, that's pretty much what we've just begun to do in the Voges 8 method that we've done here today. This is the other setting that we work in. Um, we get to have fun with lots of people of lots of different ages, but it's always using music and thinking about layers and the way that layers can start to create music. The trick is connecting the brain, the body, and the voice, which is what we've just been doing. If you think about the activity that we had to do, that complicated little clapping rhythm was getting the left and the right side of the brain working better, kind of a brain gym type activity, but it was linking with sound making. 
and it was using our body so that we were actually having to do something physically to get us involved. The reasons we're trying to do this and the problem is that teachers, fundamentally, a lot of them in the UK and internationally, don't know how to teach music. If you visit a lot of primary schools, there is a music specialist, and that music specialist will have been elected to the position, but will be terrified, absolutely terrified, because they're not really a musician. And so you, you find these guys, I had a guy talking to me in the summer, he, he plays three chords on a guitar and he's got to teach music to the school. He's, he's been given a budget of £300 for the year for the whole school, and it cost him £100 to come on the conference, and oh, we had to get cover, so that was £50 gone. You suddenly see that there are situations, in, uh, in specifically in primaries, but really across the educational sphere, where there is a real problem that music is not being taught because the teacher doesn't know how to teach it. So this fear is a big issue that we've, with the Voches 8 method, been trying to, to correct. What we just did there was very, very simple. Okay? What you heard was very, very complicated. But the way we started, just with numbers, with copying me, with ve four very simple actions, is very, very simple. And that ultimately is the point of what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to link music with learning. Actually, it ties in a lot with health, with personal development, and also a sense of community. What we did just there was basically the, the first step to creating a big choir. Um, I, I'm very lucky. I've spent my life singing in a choir, and it's the most awesome thing. It's really, really fun. I get to travel all over the world singing with a group of friends. It's the best thing I could possibly hope to do. And with the Voches 8 method, what we're trying to do is provide a tool that can be used by any teacher, anywhere, in any setting. We've been trialling this in primary schools across the UK. We've got about 300 schools now signed up doing this. It's launched in France. It's launched in Germany. It's, uh, I've got interest in China. We're taking it to America next year. So it's beginning to pick up pace. But the idea of the method is that you don't have to be a musician to do it. Anybody can learn how to do it. And everything we just did there was about layer building with little bits of musical segments that last about four seconds. Now, that's something that you can teach regardless of your musical capability. And that really is what we're trying to achieve with the Voches A method. The barriers of time, of money, and of fear are the big problems. And so we've got a tool here that we can use which hopefully combats all those things. Uh, you've been a wonderful group to work with today, and I'm basically out of time, so all that it remains for me to say is a big thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.